Prometheus Labs. SCP is generally associated with the horror genre, but over the years it has become increasingly involved with science fiction as well. I've talked about a number of anomalous machines throughout this series, from AI to weapons to spaceships. These types of anomalies come from all sorts of sources, of course, many of them unknown, but many of them were manufactured for the specific purpose of being sold. I've already looked at one such anomalous tech company, Anderson Robotics, but this time we'll be looking at Prometheus Labs, a now defunct company responsible for a wide variety of technological anomalies. The ones contained by the Foundation are those generally found in the aftermath of the company shutting down, as they continue to crop up in locations around the world. As usual, I'll be looking more closely at some SCPs connected to the group rather than the group itself. Prometheus Labs was a private, for-profit conglomerate based on research and development, founded in 1892. The company's name comes from the Greek mythological figure, Prometheus, and a hiring packet from around 1982 gives a bit more insight into that decision. Prometheus was neither a man nor a god, but instead a titan, the progeny of Gaia, the goddess of the earth, and Uranus, god of the sky. When Zeus later rose up against the titans, only a handful of them fought alongside the gods, including Prometheus. The packet author says that he won't necessarily say that Prometheus is the reason they won, and Prometheus fought for selfish reasons, humanity. Prometheus is said to have crafted humanity from clay and gave them writing, science, farming, medicine, and math. As part of this, he stole fire from the gods to give to his children, which angered Zeus, resulting in Prometheus being chained to a rock for all eternity and having an eagle eat his liver each day. Just as Prometheus stole fire from the gods, Prometheus Labs wrests the secrets from the universe. Just as fire once seemed so mystical and magical and is now trivial, so too can be the way of all unknown things through study and intuition. Prometheus Labs was certainly successful in discovering some of the secrets of the universe, as through their R&D they released an impressive lineup of anomalous tech. They were also a very public company in regard to non-anomalous tech, releasing high-quality electronic, medical and pharmaceutical, automotive, optical, and industrial goods produced from anomalous research. They had classified contracts with a number of militaries, primarily the United States, and were affiliated with most of the major anomalous groups of interest. They purchased objects from Marshall, Carter, and Dark, developed brain-machine interfaces alongside the Maxwellist branch of the Church of the Broken God, designed low-cost food alternatives for the Mana Charitable Foundation, sold tools and supplies to Are We Cool Yet, the Global Occult Coalition, and the Chaos Insurgency, waged industrial espionage against Gru Division P, and engaged in lawsuits with Wondertainment. As for the Foundation, Prometheus Labs was neither antagonistic nor friendly, and they refused the Foundation's offer of helping to design better containment protocols for some of the company's more volatile objects. Everything was going swimmingly until 1998, when an unknown event caused the entire company to go belly up. Whatever happened was a very public accident, resulting in the Foundation swooping in covering up the whole thing, and seizing many of the projects that Prometheus Labs were working on. They weren't the only ones though, as it's believed that many other groups of interest also got their hands on some Prometheus tech after the company shut down. The resultant chaos of the company's rapid shutdown has led to an incomplete picture of everything that Prometheus Labs had developed or was in the process of developing, so things continue to pop up as the years go by. Based on documents, they possessed a number of rather unique facilities, such as one in the Marianas Trench devoted to researching planetary engineering. 
a self-sustained facility on Mars devoted to nuclear physics and quantum mechanics, and even a facility constructed in the Jurassic period that researched genetic engineering. The foundation also retrieved various proposals from within the company's R&D department for new projects. One was a project to create new biological entities that could be sent to nearby planets in order to terraform the world and possibly spawn humans to populate it if necessary. Another was to develop magical computer programs that could perform exorcisms without human intervention, and another was to utilize anomalous materials in order to augment the human body, possibly to assist with their project Samsara, a project that would eventually fall into Foundation hands where they became a rather unique MTF. Needless to say, Prometheus Labs had its fingers in a lot of pies, so to speak, covering a wide breadth of anomalous tech. We're here to look at some SCPs though, so let's start off fairly simple and go from there. SCP-155 is a complex electronic construct found in the basement of Prometheus Labs' primary research facility, consisting of a highly modified supercomputer, a dedicated radioisotope thermoelectric generator, and a device that has yet to be fully reverse engineered. Whenever a program and data is loaded onto the device, it generates a spherical temporal distortion field with a 5 meter radius around it. Within the sphere, time is rapidly accelerated, thus resulting in a hyperbolic increase in the processing power of the device. Even though the processing hardware of the construct is dated by modern standards, it continues to increase over a short length of time, with the effective processing power approaching infinity after around 8 minutes. It seems that Prometheus Labs had used this to perform massive calculations that would have taken months if not years normally. The drawback of such an incredible device is that the heat and radiation generated by the construct are trapped inside of the sphere while it's operating. This doesn't harm the device much at all, but when the process is finished and the bubble is removed, a massive amount of energy can be released all at once. Anything longer than 6 minutes will result in the containment chamber needing to be decontaminated before personnel may re-enter. At one point, a flawed program resulting in an infinite loop of code was entered into the device on accident, but the process wasn't able to be stopped for 8 minutes. When it was stopped, an intense wave of heat and radiation was released, melting through the containment chamber, destroying the entire wing of the site, and killing 11 people. The construct only received minor damage from the incident. Speaking of messing with time, SCP-2308 was a line of high-performance consumer automobiles manufactured between 1999 and 2009, and sold from 1998 to 2008. The automobiles were otherwise non-anomalous, aside from being manufactured a year after they were sold, which is pretty anomalous. The company, Argo Automotives, a subsidiary of Prometheus Labs that went independent after Prometheus collapsed, somehow created a time loop in which they were able to manufacture high quality vehicles and then send them back a year into the past in order to be sold. The vehicles were marketed as being high technology and high performance, which they would have been, being a year ahead of everyone else on the market. The money that was earned from these sales was then used to fund the development and manufacture of the vehicles that were just sold. This little temporal scheme worked phenomenally well for the company until the global financial crisis of 2008. Not enough people purchased their 2009 model of vehicle, resulting in not enough funds to actually develop and manufacture the 2009 vehicle. In order to avoid a temporal paradox, however, which was rather conscientious of them, they manufactured the 2009 vehicles anyway, going bankrupt in the process. The timeline was secure, but the company went under, leading the foundation to actually discover what they had been up to. 
The Foundation didn't find any paradoxes either, but they couldn't figure out how they created the temporal loop, as the anomaly responsible was possibly sold to an unknown buyer before the company went under. Moving away from time anomalies, we have SCP-1290, a pair of prototype devices created by Prometheus as part of their research into long-range teleportation. Each device consists of a platform, 2 meters in diameter, attached to a large electronic unit, powered by a dedicated generator. One of the devices is located in Colombia, the other is on the opposite side of the Earth, in Singapore. When an object is placed on the platform of one device and the unit is activated, the object is instantaneously teleported to the other platform. However, whether by a design or engineering flaw, the object retains both its orientation and velocity relative to the axis of the Earth. This means that when a stationary object teleports, it emerges on the other platform upside down and traveling at approximately 930 meters per second. When the Foundation tested the devices by teleporting a regulation-sized bowling ball, it resulted in three casualties and severe damage to the research facility and a neighboring warehouse. They're hoping to reverse engineer the devices in order to fix the flaw, but so far haven't had much luck. You can see that near beneficial is a recurring theme with Prometheus Labs. SCP-868 is a meme created by Prometheus Labs as a result of their memory improvement research. It seems that the researchers responsible for creating it were unaware that it was memetic, meaning that it can transfer on its own into someone's mind. They believed they had just been working on a new form of therapy. The meme is transferred when someone that is infected with it has a conversation with an uninfected person for longer than 30 minutes. Symptoms of the infection will then begin to manifest after four to nine days. These symptoms typically begin with significantly improved short-term memory, with subjects generally being able to clearly remember events and info for 80% longer than normal. The longer they are infected, the more pronounced the effects become. Roughly five weeks after being infected, subjects can begin to remember with near-perfect accuracy any event or piece of information received after becoming infected. Not only that, but this effect also extends to a few days prior to becoming infected. The effect quickly expands from there, however, and soon they can begin to recall everything from since they were born. This obviously sounds incredibly useful for most people to have, with some exceptions, but the Foundation doesn't really like it too much. The problem is that the infection completely undermines the effectiveness of their amnestics, drugs they use to make people forget things. Becoming infected means that no amnestic can ever erase their memories from then on, and worse, the memory regaining effect actually nullifies previously applied amnestics, allowing people to remember things that the Foundation made them forget. Since the Foundation hands out amnestics like most companies hand out memos, this is a pretty big problem for them. Residents of a village in Bangladesh suddenly began remembering the existence of an SCP that was recovered from that location three years prior. With no way to make them forget, the Foundation was forced to wipe out the entire village under the pretense of a flood. It was later revealed that two researchers intentionally released the meme there, possibly to test its effects. Eventually, the Foundation did manage to develop a unique amnestic that was capable of nullifying the effects of the meme. It works in all cases, but some may develop early onset Alzheimer's, and others may develop self-destructive tendencies and antisocial behavior. All in all, the Foundation's happy with that. Finishing off with something a bit more dangerous, SCP-2820 is a directed energy weapon operated by an AI developed by Prometheus Labs, known as Kalki. 
The main body of the weapon resembles a multi-stage coil gun mortar, but there's a satellite dish mounted to the front, and the rear has been modified to fit a large, semi-spherical apparatus. The Foundation have yet to find a way to open this apparatus, but there is a monitor and terminal mounted on it that can be used to communicate with the AI. The monitor also shows real-time satellite footage of a random person somewhere in the world, all of whom have been found to be anomalous. This weapon, of course, kills these targets, but the interesting part is how exactly it kills them. At least once every 24 hours, the monitor will display the message, Firing, clear area, for 30 seconds, before a blue flash of light is emitted from the antenna extending from the satellite. Afterwards, the monitor will show a new target. Within 24 hours of this event, the initial target will invariably be killed by a series of coincidental occurrences, akin to the butterfly effect. Eyewitnesses to said deaths consistently mention the appearance of a chimpanzee in a trench coat, but video recordings and forensic evidence indicate that this chimpanzee does not actually exist. Instead, it seems to be a perceptual phenomenon resulting from this butterfly effect. Although the weapon anomalously initiates these coincidental events, the events themselves are not actually anomalous such as ranging from slipping on ice to purchasing cough medicine. The Foundation has managed to replicate the series of events, but it proved to be tedious, difficult, and resource intensive. The weapon was recovered from an abandoned Prometheus Labs facility in India, and were given a couple of conversation logs between a user and the AI. The AI introduces itself as Kalki, Precognitive Unit C4SS, son of Bretain, grandson of Bardeen, descendant of Bharadwaja, and the final incarnation of Lord Vishnu. It refers to the weapon as the Vaishnavastra, the celestial weapon by which it shall slay the Sunyavadis. Those are a lot of terms from Hindu mythology, but basically, Vishnu is a principal deity that is said to come down to the earth in the form of an avatar in order to protect the world from evil and chaos and restore order. Vaishnavastra is said to be Vishnu's most powerful weapon, capable of destroying any target from a distance, and Sunyavadis translates to worshippers of the void. Kalki says that it sees the past, the future, and the present, and is able to direct the flow of the universe in order to slay evil. The chimpanzee is apparently the whimsy of a being unable to extricate himself from worldly desires. While an agent was tracking down a reality bender in Brazil, he witnessed 2820's effect on the individual, which resulted in the reality bender suffering a traumatic brain injury and falling into a coma. When recounting the incident, the agent says that he followed the anomaly downtown and they ended up going down an alleyway. The wind picked up, causing a trash bag to float through the air, distracting the agent for a moment. The agent was then jumped by an unrelated criminal, demanding his wallet. The trash bag then collided with the criminal, causing him to start firing his gun wildly before the agent disarmed him. One of the bullets hit a building nearby, causing a chunk of brick to fall down and strike the reality bender in the head. The agent also mentions that when the wind picked up the bag, it almost looked like a circus monkey running away. In another example, in Nicaragua, a minor cult summoned a severely deformed and intellectually disabled Type 5 reality bender. The summoning of this reality bender resulted in a redacted incident, but intervention by SCP-2820 neutralized the threat and prevented a more severe catastrophe. A more thorough investigation of the incident was performed, recreating the timeline of events. Some of this has been redacted, but it begins with a man dropping a ballpoint pen on the ground, which the cult leader later slips on, 
resulting in her being delayed by two minutes to catch a bus. Other events include a minor cult member grabbing the wrong rifle, a rock falling out of a coat pocket which breaks a bottle of tequila and averts an XK class scenario, and a levitating trench coat is thrown onto the rifle which inadvertently discharges and shoots the reality bender in the head. So far, this all seems pretty useful to the Foundation, as it takes care of dangerous threats that the Foundation might otherwise not be able to handle as efficiently. Unfortunately, one of the targets it focused on was a Foundation site director. All attempts to destroy or deactivate the machine to stop the event were unsuccessful. They also detained the site director under suspicion that he was anomalous, but they couldn't find anything unusual about him. The site director was transferred to a level 5 safe house, surrounded by Scranton reality anchors in order to protect him from any anomalous influence. After 2820 fired though, an unexpected defect in the structure of the anchors caused a feedback loop resulting in a massive spatial deformation, killing the site director. The Foundation logged back into the terminal to ask the AI about this killing. The AI said that within 10 years, the site director would have become anomalous and wreak havoc upon mankind. When asked if it's possible the AI killed him for some other reason, the AI responded that it doesn't enjoy taking lives, but it does so in order to bring humanity into a golden age. Whether or not the Foundation believes that is unclear, but for now they can't figure out a way to stop the machine from continuing to kill anomalous individuals, although they are researching possible methods of destroying it. While a lot of groups of interest in the SCP universe fall pretty clearly into the malicious or outright dangerous camp, Prometheus Labs seem to do mostly alright, with a few exceptions. Much like Marshall, Carter, and Dark, they were primarily interested in profit, but while MC and D have very few scruples about what anomalies they deal in and who they give them to, Prometheus Labs had every intention of being a relatively safe and dependable anomalous business. What exactly happened in 1998 that caused the entire company to implode might never be known, and in the end I think the foundation is happy that they're gone as clearly the company was involved with some things above their pay grade. Just as Prometheus was punished for overstepping his bounds, it seems that so too was Prometheus Labs. <laughs>